What's up YouTube fam, Javier Mercedes here for another Premiere Pro tutorial and one of my subscribers, Harvey Danger Films, asked me to do a tutorial about this Luma Fade spin transition thingy on one of my coffee montages. So hopefully some of the tips and tricks that I use to come up with this transition will help you on your future endeavors of filmmaking. If you're into this kind of stuff, go ahead and think about subscribing and throw me that like if it's helpful. Leave me a comment down below if you've seen something else in one of my videos that you want me to show you. And let's go ahead and get into this Luma Fade spin spin transition of coffee goodness. Let me just show you the two shots raw. The first shot is just this, where my brother's putting coffee grinds into the French press. And then the second shot is him flipping this pot to put water in it. First thing I'm thinking about is I have to get from the coffee grinds in the French press to filling up a pot with water. Immediately, I'm thinking to myself, Man, wouldn't it be cool if I could somehow get this to turn into the pot? Because it's kind of like a miniature pot, except it's just holding those coffee grounds. I've been seeing a lot of people use Luma fades recently, so that's what I was going to try and do. First thing you, that you want to do, I'm actually going to slow this down to 20% because I shot this at 120 frames per second, so I can do that. Next thing to think about, this one I'm going to speed ramp. So time remapping speed. Now what I'm looking for is to still hit that 20%, but I'm going to start it maybe at 100 so it can, I'm gonna maybe slow down during the middle of the spin. And that will look something like this. I'm gonna pull it down to 20% once it gets to the spin. Wham. And then I want it to come back into real, real time when it's coming out of the spin. Wham. Close enough for the time being. One thing that I might do is change the linear to more of an exponential curve or logarithmic. Let's maybe do this a little bit. Pop. So next thing I need to do is line the, the pot up with the spoon. Now go to this one. Go to my tab right here and go to maybe turn this off. And then I'm just going to take the opacity down so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to give myself a little breathing room. Going to extend these out. Then I'm going to nest it. By nesting it, now I just have a clip that has the action that I want, but I can add different effects like spinning it and all that stuff. I'm going to go to transform, drag in on my nested clip. And I'm going to use my transform property here to manipulate the spinning of my clip and the scaling and all that stuff. The reason being is because I can use the motion blur that comes along with transform as opposed to not having motion blur by just using motion, which is really nice. So right here, I'm looking for this last frame right about there. And here I'm going to start lining this pot up. So rotate it and move it into position. We have the clip where it somewhat needs to go. First thing I'm going to do is the Luma fade. So let's do Luma. I'm gonna do Luma key, boom. And how this works is your effects controls and I want to bring the threshold down to zero. Find where I want that Luma fade to start happening. So I want it to start happening as the stuff is falling down because I want the action of these coffee grinds and the Luma fade all to be in one little action. So I maybe start the threshold and the cutoff right here. I'll go five frames and then I will take this to 99 and this to 100 or the cutoff to 100 the threshold to 99 and you don't want to go to 100 with the threshold because you end up getting something like this I don't know why that is or if that's just my um, project that it's happening with but now we have something like this we have that luma fade happening and oop look at that there's our pot right in the position where we want it to be uh, just to make this look cooler I'm going to go here and go ease out and ease in and then I'm also going to grab this and move it over. So it's not just a linear movement, it is now an exponential keyframe. So vroom, vroom, vroom. Yes. 
might make it a little bit longer. So, vroom, vroom. And obviously, the vroom is a big part of what's going on here. So, vroom. And now I need to find the spot where, by the time it's out, the pot is going to start flipping. So, vroom, pop, vroom, pot. Let's go ahead and manipulate what we want our pot to spin and move into position with. So by the end of this spin, I want to pop like right when it right when the ladle is going down, I want it to be scaled up and into position. So what I'm going to do is hit this scale position and rotation on the transform property. And I'm going to wait for that Luma fade to be done. And then I'm going to start the movement right here. So by this point, all I have to do is hit um, this button to res to tell it to go back to center, scale to go to 100, and rotation to go back to 100. So now it's going to look something like this. Wham, pop. We're getting closer, aren't we? Wham, pop. Wham, pop. It looks like it's taking a little, I'm going to move this just a smidge because it takes just a little too long for the action to start. I want it to start spinning the minute that that Luma fade is almost done. Maybe just right before. All right, so wham, pop. Oh, and actually what I'm going to do is go temporal, that same thing. Let's go ease out. Temporal importation, ease in. Do this down mark. Bring it so I like this kind of movement. Go vroom, pop. You see that? Vroom, pop. That's really cool. Vroom, pop. All right, so the next part of the sequence is to fill out this black space. And how do you do that? So the next technique can get complicated, but it utilizes mirror and replicate to give you more real estate here on the sides. And I'll show you here in a second. Go to our effects tab, replicate. Bring that onto our file. Now you might get something like this, and that's not what we're looking for. That's because our transform is on the file right here. So what we need to do is bring that above our transform. Now everything's connected to each other. And I'm actually gonna do the count of three. And I'm going to move my cursor down here just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so this is it locked into position. The next step is going to be mirroring this middle image so we get nice seamless sides of the transition. And you'll see here what I mean in a second. So now we go we type in mirror and I'm going to mirror this on the right side to begin with. I'm actually going to take this and duplicate it three more times. So now we have these mirrors I'm going to bring it above my transform property. This first one I'm going to bring into position right here. 1272 seems to be a good position. This next one, I need to get this left side right here. But in order to do that, you'll find, uh oh, how do, I, how do I get over there? Well, you just got to flip it around. So we're going to type this in 180. Now we're over on the other side. And we have a nice little mirror of this image. So next I'm going to get the bottom there. And then I will do 90 here like that. All right, so you can see the middle image here. And to show you before and after, this was before, and this is after. Now I have this neat little replicated uh, file, but the thing is, it's thrown off everything. Now I just gotta scale it so it hits the same it hits the same spot, right? So I'm gonna move this. So I'm gonna move this up one file. I'm going to duplicate this by holding Option and clicking. So on this one on the top, I'm actually going to delete all of these, but keep the transform property. So now I have this with a duplicated one above 
and one with the replicate mirror and all that stuff on the bottom. Go to your first keyframe on the bottom one. I'm actually going to undo this. This is the file right here. I'm going to scale this up to 300. And to show you, now I'm putting that file over. So just so we can see what we're doing, I'm going to take this opacity down to 20%, move along. And I need to now line up on the first keyframe, my bottom replicated layer. So now I'm going to take this position and I'm going to line up that file. That's close. And boom. Now I have that space on every side of the file. Now you might be saying, well, Javier, you still have black over here. Well, that's okay because all I got to do now is nest everything here, go to transform, bring in transform here, drag it on. And now I'm going to go to scale and position and go to that spot where it goes in and going to scale into and over to this spot. It's going to scale in and when it goes to lock into position around there, I'm going to restore it back to its position. So it looks something like this. Wham! Pop. Wham! Pop. That's pretty cool. I'm going to take this off, do something like 180 for some motion blur. Wham! Pop. Then I'm also going to go back in here, do this at something like 180, and with this one as well, 180. Pop. And what I might do now, temporal, ease out. Ease in. Copy that, be that. Now I do temporal, is out, is in, scale, and see how that looks. Pop. Pop. Only thing that's left to do is bring in some black bars. See what we get. Pop. Pop. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and there you have it. That is how I did that Luma Fade transition thingamajiggy. I hope you guys liked this tutorial and it was fun for you. I hope you learned something and that you can utilize that in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below if this tutorial has helped you or if it was just super confusing uh yeah there we go